Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, hello again. My name is Ray Gary, and you have tuned into the Curry Cafe. Curry Cafe is a show that we do here with, uh, today we have five people and try to have some type of a interesting conversation about a particular subject. Today, the particular subject will be the news. Where do you get your news? Do you believe your news? What happened to the news? It used to be John Cameron Swayze for 15 minutes at 10.15, and now it's days of nothing sometimes. Maybe we can go around the table now and start out with the person to my left. That's me, Lee. Lee to Lee. I'm glad to be here. Next. And me, Rick McNamer, volunteer at KCIW, and to my left. Hi, I'm Kathy Justman. It's my second show, and I'm excited to be here. Yes, and I'm Billy Furici. I have a show here on KCIW, and also it's really my pleasure to be here with Curry Cafe again. So the news has become a thing now that, that we all watch or most of us watch or listen to or somehow or other get, but we don't all agree about where we get it from. Uh, we have friends that listen to CNN, Fox News, um, PBS, and we all probably have different opinions about the same subject. In 1980, CNN decided to do a 24-hour news station. Then they had to fill that 24 hours with news, and there wasn't necessarily enough news, so they could beat a subject to death. You have some? <laughs> well, CNN used realized. to be. I don't know. CNN used to be uh, my choice for quite a while. Um, in fact, God, it seemed like my wife and I had it on almost 24 seven, but it got a little over. I think the news in general is a way oversaturated. Uh, probably everything is nowadays, whether you listen to rock and roll or country or whatever. But um, I've long ago given up pretty much on CNN. Um, they overdid their breaking news stories. If you remember that, it would be breaking news for the same. everything. Yeah, it, rem it kind of reminded me, I refer to Saturday Night Live a lot, but Chevy Chase's... Uh, Francisco Franco was still dead. He did that for a few years. Yeah. And that's kind of how <laughs> CNN was becoming to me. But um, MSNBC just did that too. They started, the Chiron always says breaking news, no matter what's happening. That's right. Could be three day old news, but it's still breaking. Right, right. For, for me personally, on I pretty much go to PBS NewsHour, Christian Amanpour. I, I, I just, that's a more uh, listenable news, if you will. And I trust their factual, mostly. Well, it used to be that CNN was the standard. Yeah. If you wanted nonpartisan news, that's where you went. And then you had MSNBC for the lefties and Fox for the righties. And CNN was kind of the mediator. But that seems to have gone by the wayside now. The right wing seems to think that CNN is very lefty. I'm not sure that that's true, but that's the reputation I keep hearing. And, and I'll chime in here on that, Lee, uh, with, with an observation that I've made most recently is that I, I have gotten away from MSNBC precisely for that reason. It's just constant breaking news, it's, and they repeat, repeat, repeat. So I have taken to going to YouTube and listening to the Young, the young Turks. I don't know if you've ever heard them, but they're actually very good at reporting the news. Know them All, well. Also, I like... Um, C-SPAN, which I just was on today watching something really interesting, and a couple of other things too, but that's what I have to say about MSNBC now. It's kind of interesting how they choose what's going to be news, how, they're going to, how much time they're going to spend on the particular item. I happened to be in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale when uh, the little alien episode was going on, the little Cuban kid that wound up here. Oh, and they wound up, yeah. That was uh, a lot. I mean, and, and, and one a news, episode, it wasn't even a news, it was a breaking news. They had a camera set up on a canal 
where he was going to be coming in a boat and going in that tour right there. And they, they did that for, must have been 15, 20 minutes, saying, we're expecting him any minute, and that door is, and that door has a knob on it and probably a lock, and, and, and the <laughs> poor guy had to say, and then worse than that was that woman died in the hard rock, and I can't remember her name. She was um, an actress or something, and I think her claim to fame was she married some 98-year-old guy. And, oh, yeah. Oh, Okay. She, Can't was, think of the she name might have either. been a Playboy model, too. Yes, yes. Yes, that's right. You would not believe how the news just shifted immediately to her. All the stations, all of them, not just Fort Lauderdale, every place. Like, and, and I'm saying, who the hell is she? And then when I found out who she was, I was even madder they wasted that much of my time on <laughs> Why do you care? Yeah. You know, it's uh, well, one we, of the things. We, well, Go ahead. Cameras were, 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 when they were moving the body from Fort Lauderdale, were, were outside the airplane waiting to carry the casket on. It was unbelievable. Yeah. One of the things I have difficulty with is they'll start a story, and within 12, 14, 24 hours, it's gone. So you, you don't get follow-up on like really important stories that, in my sense of things, is are more important than what they're reporting on, but it's not new anymore. And it's, it's all about t- news is now supposed to be entertainment. And if you're not... To hearing something new, you're not entertained. So, you know, it, you can't get be- below the surface or even get closure on a lot of issues because they just move on to the next thing. I, I really, really hate to admit this, and I'm trying to cure myself, but I used to, well, when I lived in Alaska, I only got two stations, and one of them was PBS. So I watched the news hour every night, and it was good, fair and balanced, if you will, news, and covered the subject to the point that it needed to be, but not overly. And now that I've moved down to the world of uh, satellite television and everything, I find that news to be kind of boring, and I watch the sensational. <laughs> but I, w- I watch the uh, the network news, because I'm thinking that they're more likely to be fair, and they seem to be, than anybody. Um, but the, they, uh, they whip through stuff. And, and the morning news there's uh, the, I don't know if they even call it the news, there's about 15 minutes of news and then they go on to the latest fashion this or who put the new album out or... You're talking about like Good Morning America yeah, and all that. Yeah, and now they even have a segment where they're selling crap. You know? Well... We have I, the special deal this week on... Uh, yeah. Right. I mean, uh, I, I understand part, you're right, Lee, entertainment. I think that's what most of those are. Uh, little snippets of news, lots of ads, mm-hmm. and uh, lots of fluff. And but a lot and, of people and, like and it. A but decent amount of cleavage. Well, oh, God, <laughs> Fox News is a champion. <laughs> but uh, the other thing, a, a little thing that really has bothered me, and I, I quit watching those a long time ago, you're, they're reading hard news story, and in the background are tourists screaming and jumping and yelling yeah. and saying, what, how, uh, it's like I, I, I can't listen to that, or I can't listen to it and try to watch it with that kind of stuff. I think they've gone way overboard with that. Now, maybe only one of those does it. I don't know. What's the other one? Good Morning America. I mean, uh, I don't know. oh gosh, The View. Yeah, I used to be. I used to love The View, but I, that's another one I kind of dropped off with. So go ahead, Kathy. Sorry. Well, I'm going to be a little bit different and say uh, I didn't have a habit of watching the news daily. After 9-11 and the Iraq War, I sort of stopped watching the news, and um, all of a sudden, something came up that made me want to watch the news every day, but it was, I was uh, the occupation of Standing Rock. That was a big, big event for me, and I started looking for the daily news from Standing Rock, and that was on um, Facebook or YouTube. And so it wasn't on any news outlet because they actually became a news outlet and there there was something happening every day. Sometimes it was a new atrocity. Sometimes it was a new line beyond which we will not let you pass. You know, there was always something going on there and it happened for almost a whole year and it was to stop an oil pipe. Well, then, then that was gone as they moved out because um, winter flooded the, um, I mean, the melting snow in the spring melted the uh, and flooded the whole place where they camped. Well, I only watched funny news after that. News by comedians. 
because I didn't want to watch the straight news undiluted. <laughs> Tell me what you think about that. You know, if if you, John Stewart frequently has very uh, intelligent comments on the news and 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 gives a viewpoint that's real. He he does, Ray. Uh, this is Billy now again, and I I like that idea of John Stewart. And sometimes the comedians do have uh, news reports that that are more salient than you might get on on regular um, yes, MSNBC or the and fa- and more factual. But that's one of the things I why I switched over to just watching C-SPAN and going to YouTube to to the Young Turks and there's one other. One other thing, I can't quite remember his David name. David Pakman? David Pakman. There you go. David Pakman. He's a very and factual, straightforward and they, guy. And I they think. analyze it, and they're very factual. I really appreciate it. And he has had on, David Pakman has had on people, a lot of people that have opposite uh, Opposite viewpoints. Views, thank you. That, yes. And, you yeah. know, and, and, and oh, I've yeah. never seen either one of them lose it like can happen. At yeah. times. He's got George Conway on there sometimes, who is okay. wonderful. Okay. I really yeah. the other the other news source, I think, is the um um sometimes documentaries on Netflix. You mm-hmm. can really get a historical perspective on a lot of the news stories with documentaries from Netflix. There was one I watched last night called The Antisocial Network. Memes and mayhem, and it's the nexus. It's the it's the creation story, sort of the origin story of how the um, how this whole rabbit hole thing came about. It started with really young kids in the early nineties. This this young man would not go to school. He would pretend to be sick. He would get his father's checkbook. He would sign up for AOL. He would go on to AOL. This was in the early 90s. And as soon as, just before the father came home, he would get off of it. He would cancel his subscription. Well, that morphed into what we know now as the... Um, the TikTok all, and all that other stuff. All of that other stuff that drags us down the rabbit holes. Yeah. Pretty ugly. On- so should that be, should TikTok and, and social media be in some way monitored and limited and Boy, keeping, that's keep, a, that's, keeping that's politics that's out, for instance. So, <laughs> yeah, I know it yes. is, but I mean, any anybody could put something on, like, well, YouTube is another example. Sure. Can, I've sat and watched videos that were just absolutely wrong, but if some guy had a camera and, and did it. Another time I made a comment to a uh, uh, to a YouTube person. They were, they were cleaning camera sensors is what it was, and the making a big deal out of it. So I just wrote in a comma. I said, all you need is a Q-tip, you know. And <laughs> uh, next show, well, Ray, Ray Gary wrote in that uh, really all we need is a Q-tip. So maybe that's what, so all of a sudden I was an expert because I was just. <laughs> You're famous. <laughs> right. Everybody's an expert now. Yes. <laughs> I want to shout out also to, I'm a big newspaper. That I know they're going away. There'll be a day we don't have them probably. Hopefully not in my lifetime. But I do, I take both local papers here, the triplicate and the pilot, once a week. I get the San Francisco Sunday Chronicle delivered. And I also get, I through kind of a, 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 well, whatever happened, I got a hold of the Santa Rosa Press Democrat out of uh, Santa Rosa. And that is my favorite paper. What but, is that? Curious. What's that? Why is that? Oh, gosh. It just... The whole format, uh, they have a wonderful editorial, you know, the editorial page. That's one of my favorite things, editorial cartoons and the comments from local folks. And in our local papers, I don't really see a lot of letters to the editor. And I've written a couple, and they never got, some have got, well, a couple got published, some haven't. And uh, I think that's a big part of a local paper. And that's why we started the feature that we have now that I can't think of the name so soapbox, local soapbox. Oh gosh, come in and do a two-minute recording, and, and we will play that. And Brian, and because there are not a lot of letters to the editor, and no, for whatever reason, sometimes they don't. And, and I, I could, go ahead, Lee. I was just going to say, I know a lot of folks that have written letters to the editor, and they don't get in the paper, and it's frustrating for people because they like reading those. The first thing they do with the local paper is open up to letters. Of, of the editor, and there aren't very many anymore. So that's no, and I, I don't understand that part. That's 
I do. Um, Kathy used to write letters into the editor all the time, oh. didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, usually on behalf of, usually on behalf of the Czech Coactivity Center. Uh, there were some other things I wrote letters about, um, but um, you're confusing letters with. There was a column that I wrote called oh, Faith Forum, and before that, it was Compasses. And before that, well, Compasses, I think, lasted for decades, and then they changed editors, and then they changed it to Faith Forum. So there were other things for local that local people could write in, and now it's all canned uh, things. Any Western topic, any subject becomes like a, an, a, 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 an op-ed or a commentary. And uh, just one little critique. I mean, I, again, I love newspapers. And this is a nitpicky thing, but so the last pilot last week's, they had a big article about the water spout that was off the coast here mm -hmm. in Cape Farello. Mm -hmm. Lee, you know Cape Farello pretty I well. Do. <laughs> but so the headline was water spout off Cape Farello. Well, they misspelled Farello. Oh, no. <laughs> now, again, uh, and further on in the article, they corrected, but the, the main headline, headline was misspelled. I thought that was a little lazy. <laughs> journalism, and then in another little section. But again, it's just the uh, uh, quirky stuff of local papers. There was a, and I've caught other misspellings and grammatical errors. And so, as a kid, I remember, or a younger person, I used to go to the newspaper and uh, it was like an English lesson, you know, if I didn't know this word and how this was written. And, and those papers had to be type set up. They were set up with linotype. Not like today, the newspaper is done on a computer, yeah. and you can you can read it before it goes any place. Right. I mean, do you think this, they don't have spell check in it? Well, well no, that's, the pilot, that's it. That's the all they do is spell check things. But the really pilot was famous, famous, has always been famous for 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 typos <laughs> and okay. misspellings and uh, dangling modifiers and <laughs> all of those things. Oh, not not dangling <laughs> modifiers. <laughs> no, oh, no. I'm, I'm, so, I'm really sorry you brought that up. But I may have a little trouble today. <laughs> but just, even <laughs> published books today, you know, they, they throw it through a spell checker. So any word that is spelled the same, spelled correctly, but not the right word, ends up still being in the text. Yes. That, and things and like that. Yeah, it drives me nuts. Yeah. It's so unedited, and that you would put that out under your name. It, it says, anyway, I don't know. You spelled a but, word correctly, but not necessarily the, the word, word you wanted. Right. Correct, and, and lots of other things. That's all they do in terms of editing. You know, know what I've noticed joke, in, never mind. in magazine articles, and I don't know if it continues, but when the you had a thesaurus, on your computer, all of a sudden there were bigger words that you never saw before and never heard of that went into these magazine articles. Huh? And one more thing back to the newspapers. Uh, I try. I do use a site, if you will. It's called Media Bias Fact Check. I don't know if anybody's familiar with it, but I, I think so, and I think it's pretty uh, straightforward. I, I use it for everything, for uh, uh, news shows, newspapers. Now, I could not get it. I guess the triplicate and the pilot were too small to be checked, if you will. But the Chronicle and the Santa Rosa Press Democrat were both rated highly factual in their reporting. That was heartening That's to me. Nice. And also, I was surprised a little bit, uh, the... Oh, gosh, the ABC, CBS, and NBC, again, network news I don't watch, but they were all rated pretty high, too, which I thought, okay, well, that's good. Mm -hmm. PBS was up there. Way on the bottom was Fox, OAN. Of course. Oh. I, I mean, it, basically conspiracy theory mm -hmm. news. That's not news. And uh, MSNBC was down there, too, and CNN and was And I catch them in a few things from time to time. Oh, I'll have to say... A, a, Quick critique again on MSNBC. Now, I was watching a little blurb of Mika Brzezinski yeah. interviewing, oh God, I can't think of her name now, that lady from uh, Minnesota, I love her, but now I can't think of it. Sorry. Anyway, but Mika, and I like her, but she was they, talking about Trump, and then Mika threw out about his selling the Bible or something. And then Mika threw out, well, all he knows how to do is hold the Bible upside down. <laughs> Well, that isn't true. That got fact-checked 
way back when, and, and it was a one to jump on. But my feeling but was, that, hey man, you sh- Mika, you should know that and not use that. That's uh, the joke, though. That's you know, he didn't, he wasn't holding it upside down, but I, I, I he kind of was because it was an upside down thing he was doing. Well, I guess so. I uh, just a little critique. I just thought that was kind of lazy and shouldn't have been, shouldn't have happened. It seems like they're always lazy when they interview him. Uh, <laughs> there, there's one that I've seen now a couple of times where some uh, two people are asking him about what his favorite passages. Oh, are in the Bible. That. Yes. And uh, I, I don't know if he was ready for it or not, but he was pretty quick with the comeback. He says, well, that's personal, and I just... Oh. And, and they pressured him a little bit. Right. And why doesn't one of them say, have you ever opened I'll, the Bible in your life? Right, right. Um, I mean, I, yeah, I've seen that a bunch of times. And he reminded me of a kid in junior high that was quizzed by his teacher and had to come up with something quick because he didn't know the answer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, all of them, I guess. I don't know. It was pretty <laughs> yeah. Well, Speaking of Trump and news, yes. after he was elected the first time when he lost by, what was it, 7 million votes that time? But anyway, so. uh, some of the heads of, of, of the networks were, were kind of uh, confessing that they did a lot to get him in there because he was news, and he was always saying something ridiculous. And outrageous, and always on the news. It's kind of like when true. Sarah when Sarah Palin was running for vice president, her website was off the wall popular. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean people wanted to hear what she had to say. Well, they did. They wanted to, what the hell is she talking about now? It's half of them, but well, that makes it really hard for anybody else to get a word in edgewise when he's always doing something sensational. And again, it's about how entertaining is it, how sensational is it. So he feeds into that, works off of it, gets all that free coverage, and nobody else can get any coverage. Well, has there any? Has there ever been in history? Well, it's hard to go back in the pre-TV days, but any any ex-president in history that's been on the news daily more than this guy? I mean, every day. Yeah. Ex-president or current president, nobody's on the news like that. Well, yeah, that's uh, which I I. I guess that's his the method to his madness, just well, say something really, really uh, dumb. Yeah. And, yeah. But you would think that somebody would start to say, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. What was his latest? He was, oh, he's now he's calling the the, uh, the undocumented animals. They're not people, they're animals. Oh, of course. I just like in a vicious, yeah. vicious it way. Yeah. On and on. I, I remember like 20 years ago or more, there was a book maybe. I remember an interview about, Media inversion, that that was the way to get attention is you did something completely upside down from the expected, something really negative, and you'd get coverage. No such to thing as bad your press. book or whatever you right. wanted to do. What right. was that? That's, that's, that's a, 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 a saying, and you know, my friends who have been in the entertainment business, there's no such thing as bad press. Right. You know, and also, we, we did a show earlier about women's progress. We go back to the... Quote, good old days. Now, as a kid, that's what I remember my parents watching Huntley Brinkley or Walter Cronkite or Eric er- er- Severide. A- anyway, but... John Cameron Swayze? Okay. <laughs> that too. And I ca- nowadays, like Lee said, it's just really entertainment and bells and whistles and fluff and all of that stuff. And uh, I kind of miss the old reporting, but uh, along with the good old days, there was a lot of good old boys. And I remember... Barbara Walters, I believe, first lady mm-hmm. to make the break that ceiling. Yeah, and it was Harry Reasoner, and come later in life, she said that Harry Reasoner was pretty much of a, a brute misogynist. He didn't like that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And I think that kind of went on for a while. Then the next was, I think it was fourteen or fifteen years before another lady to come on to National News, and it was Connie Chung. And of course, now it's you know getting oh, better, can, better in my opinion. I think I'd much rather listen to most of these ladies that I see than these. How can we forget dodgers. how well we got to know Connie Chung from that year in the Olympics <laughs> when uh, who was the uh, she would it, it, it was oh I don't remember the, the 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 little breaks they'd have would be the guy who played with her talking about what a wonderful person she was and how and then. Mutual admiration society, and, and I, I believe it was even fuzzy, you know, a little bit of focus. And, you don't remember I that. I don't. 
She was with, was it Dan Rather? I think that was her partner. May, may have been Dan okay. Rather, yes. Okay. Each of them, yeah. yeah. Mutual Admiration Society. Yeah. Advertising the news. The thing that bothers me most, just to get back onto the straight news channel, is that, you know, there's so much haranguing. Like, if, if you want to get the left perspective or the right perspective, that you get on those stations and they're just hyperbolic. They're just, you know, the world is coming to an end tomorrow, and maybe it is. I mean, that could be true. But the way they say it in such strident ways and just kind of rabble-rousing, I think it adds to the polarization that we're experiencing. Um, even Rachel Maddow, who I think is brilliant, she does that sometimes. And, it, it, you know, I just feel my blood pressure going up, my stomach getting into a knot. And <laughs> I don't need that. I just want some news, you know. Right. I don't need to be emotionally manipulated like that. The sick thing is, is that these people are doing this and they don't seem to care. Are they doing it? Is Rupert Murdoch's organization doing what they do just for money? Because they know that they're not, they're, they're doing harm. They're doing actual harm and they have to know it. Right. But they continue to do it anyway. Not, 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 it's an editorial policy that they have to follow. They sign a contract. I know, but why did they have to follow the editorial policy or they get canned. Why it's do like, they why have do you that? think Tucker Carlson is no longer there? Why do they have that, that editorial policy? Well, how long was... That, that editorial policy is, is, is based on the, uh, on the network like ratings, yeah. on ratings, and that's how they know that they can get away with what they get away with because it bumps up their ratings when they you, get hyperbolic like that. Yeah. You that's might find what, it interesting to know where that kind of started. Back in 1883, Joseph Pulitzer, of all people, bought a kind of a failing uh, New York newspaper and turned it into a yellow rag and made a fortune. And that's, I guess, what you would have to call Fox News. Money and the yellow. Profit. But, I mean, they're really doing harm. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're promoting pe people that are just lying. They, they had to pay, not that long ago, three quarters of a billion dollars settlement not for making a mistake, not for not being careful, but just out and out lying, lying. So about a few days after that, uh, and I mean that close, we have this this local thing called Next Door Neighbor. It's kind of like a it's a community well, thing. We're supposed to uh, ask if somebody knows where I can get a good plumber or something like that. But lately, it's gone up to a lot of politics. I I just dismissed it. Oh, that's but this, bad. This this woman uh, wrote in and she said, if you, if you want to know what's really going on on the border, watch Fox News. I said, excuse me? <laughs> Three quarters of a billion dollars for lying. And, and it just goes on and on and on. Tucker Carlson. People really watched and believed Tucker Carlson. Yeah. Believed that, that, that our, our manhood was dying because we weren't getting enough sun on our testicles. <laughs> uh, this is, this is I, something he so really did. Ways yeah, to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> and I think isn't he's uh, yeah. Oh, yes, Fox fired him, but d isn't he back on it? Some. I oh mean, yeah, he, he jumped. Yeah, he about sure, back and out. probably as popular as ever. I, I w don't understand just it. Just with the just with the far riders. He well, and uh, gosh, you know, I didn't do my research there, but I thought that Fox even though they were way down the list on the media bias fa for factual news and, and way over to the right extreme reporting, I think they're still the, one of the more popular I'll probably the source. I doubt they lost a single patron when, when they had to pay that fine. And I, I, I don't quite understand Because the people that. said it's, it's, it's all political. Just right. like every time Trump gets in trouble, it's political. It's politically motivated. It's the deep state wants right. to get rid of him. The other thing that we haven't really touched on is how many people are getting their news from social media. I mean, apparently that's that more people get their news from that than from the news. But that and it can be any no, it can be anything that anybody wants to say. But because they heard it from a non-news source, it's somehow more credible. And that doesn't make any sense to me. But that's how most people are getting their news these days. Th this is why this documentary called. Anti -so the Anti-Social Network on uh, Netflix was so 
fascinating. It it ran through the history of how the social network began, the nexus of it, the whole create. It's a creation story of how it started, and it's really worth watching. And it's why those people are being taken down the rabbit holes today, and they think they're getting news, and they're not. And the way the our algorithms are set up to drive people into more polarized exactly. places. Yeah, that, and that is say, really criminal. If you if you want to watch another good documentary on Netflix, Netflix, it's clickbait. It's it oh, yeah. talks about Master that um, what was the algorithm name? clickbait. Oh, okay. Yeah. And is it, now this is a little out of my territory, uh, be, being not a technological wizard, but I do go to YouTube like uh, probably everybody, and I have noticed that the algorithms, Lee, is that like for example, I'll see a story on YouTube. You'll it, suddenly start getting more well, more. and yeah, and it'll be a story. I'll like. Uh, a weird, creepy story, and I happen to click it. From then on, I'm getting, yeah. oh, this guy must be a conspiracy. Oh, theory. Right. It goes, it goes, okay, that's what that and is. Social media is even more extreme with that, right? Because, and yeah. I, I long ago got off Facebook um, and all of that. But uh, it's funny because I actually tried to get back on Facebook. Oh, after I got here, because we have a Facebook page, I believe, and I couldn't get back on. I thought, well, maybe that's a good. Thing. Because when I got off two or three years ago, I rem I just got sick of it, like a lot of people. And um, they kept saying, are you sure you want to delete your blah, blah, blah? You know, yeah. Gave me another month. Are you positive? Yeah. <laughs> so I did. And I guess that solidified me as no more Facebook. I don't know. Count Crazy. Yourself lucky. I do. <laughs> I do. Uh, you you talk about just clicking on a subject on on YouTube and then you get flow. Oh my! I'll I'll go one better than that. And I think I talked about it on the show before. All of a sudden, I started getting uh, YouTube shows about blue healers. Oh, because recently I had been talking about the best dog I ever had, and if I ever find another one, I'll bring it home and. It wasn't, wasn't, I, did, I didn't put it on my computer or anything. I was just talking like we're talking here. And this thing is listening. Oh, it's, it's not the first time that's happened. You weren't happened. talking on the radio. You weren't talking no, on any no, media whatsoever, no, no, just no. among friends. Another that's time crazy. I was talking to somebody else in my kitchen about something pretty esoteric. I don't remember. It wasn't a big deal, but it wasn't something you talk about all the time. I don't know about it, what guitar picks are made out of or something like that. <laughs> Within days, I'm getting YouTube. Uh, YouTube's to right. to that subject. It's a little scary. Oh, what, another what, time. Wait a minute. Got, was got, your telephone on? I don't when, think it matters if it's on. So who's picking it up? The phone is picking it up. That's what I said. So I mentioned that on? I mentioned that to somebody uh, a week or so ago, and she said, "Yeah, of course. You know, it's you know, you're not not informed if you don't already know that." Well, when I first when my wife first allowed me to have a <laughs> computer, uh, <laughs> she was good at it. I wasn't. But when, so I, I there's a little, well, uh, very techno uh, ignorant here, but there's, there's that little camera on there on a computer, like when you open it up, and she put a piece of tape over there, yeah. telling me that now they can't view you and all of it's that stuff. I mine, just, mine falls down. Well, I want right. my computer. No, but I, mean, I didn't look at the laptop. Maybe the laptop probably. Okay. Has it. Oh, yeah. While you're put on tape there. on there, the camera on the phone. I'm going to introduce the idea of uh, news from AI because um, we've been talking about the algorithms, and so we know that they're listening all the time, and they're going to find the thing that we're talking about. Like I'll say, I'll look up Vivian Lay on Google. Next thing I know, my YouTube feed, which belongs to Google, I believe, uh, shows me Vivian Lay movies. <laughs> okay, so um, on YouTube, there's a lot of AI voices. Where you can obviously tell that somebody typed a story, yeah. and then a robot is trying to read the story, and the way they're pronouncing names will evolve through the story because they don't know how Jared is pronounced, or they yeah. don't know how, you know. But that's that's the only way you can spot those, where they mis Oh, I'm listening. I am paying and attention. They'll get, they'll get... I am looking for the evolution of AI to where it gets to the point where it can fool us, because right now it can't, except for some people are fooled. But when it gets to the point where we can't tell the difference, 
then we're in trouble. But you see all those people on Fox News, they know they're going to be replaced by AI eventually. That's why they have to be outrageous, because there's no, con- there's no emotion in the AI voice yet. There it will be. be. There the, will be. The, the AI things that you're listening to on YouTube and stuff, I think there are different levels. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there's ads about how you can just send them the, the, your, your script and they'll, they'll read it in an accent or whatever. And there's probably like the A, B, and C, and, and I C, knew that C will get all the pronunciations correctly. Yes, I remember when uh, I first got a cell. How much self- money have you got to put into it? <laughs> when exactly when I uh, first got a cell phone, I was living in Tucson, and the cell phone did not pronounce Spanish words very well at all. But it got better. So and now you can go so- there and they'll. You get you'll get all the all the streets pronounced correctly. Just this week, I heard something about a law. Uh, forbidding um, AI voices from imitating um, politicians, but I'm not sure if it covers like all, it doesn't cover like celebrities, but I don't know if I heard that it was passed or proposed or what. I don't know where that law is, but it's a very popular, uh, and I'm going to have to look it up after this. I thought well, <laughs> that Pandora's box had already been opened. It's Didn't getting better it though. Has. Okay, well, I was going to say, I. Think, and it's trying, they're trying to shut it. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. Because there was one going out about Joe Biden calling uh, people or yeah. something, and that was, that's yeah, it shouted. Okay. But I, also I, video. I mean, they're getting so good at it that they can oh, yeah. take videos of politicians saying yeah. things that they exactly. don't want to be saying and right. things of that nature. It's I watched a speech by Trump, a short speech the, uh, the other day, where he was, this is the day after the, the, the insurrection, Talking about how they were criminals and there was no business, they had no business, blah, 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 and they're going to pay to the fullest extent of the law and blah, 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 blah. Has anybody else here seen that? No, I haven't. I saw it like last week. I never saw it contemporaneously. I saw it when it first came out. Did? And he did several takes. He had a script that had, be- had been given yeah. to him. He did several takes and he cut out some of the things he didn't want to say. I he remember didn't want that. To say yeah. it was an insurrection. He said, "No, no, I'm not going to say that." Um, and so he he retracted those words before it went out on the air. But he's saying this, and now, of course, he's saying that they were heroes and patriots and all that. Mm. Something I never remember seeing that speech when it came out, and I'm staring at it. Is this real? Is this AI? No. Is this an example of them what they can do? But it, it was it he was did do real. It. He really did that. But no, I'm sorry. I'm. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was a speech where he was saying, "Oh, I love you people so much, you know, but yeah. go home now." And yeah. the the last the thing that he said to calm everybody down eventually at the end of the day. At the end of the day, but this was the following day. He dressed oh, up in okay. his suit and so everything. It's an obviously a news. Thing. Another little shout out. I go back to my little soapbox. I just think PBS watching it. It just seems like that's the least amount of shouting and screaming and the shiny bells, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Another, a couple more shows I like to watch, uh, Washington Week in Review. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, a panel of different people with, and just discussing with facts. And then there's an interview show, uh, Margaret Hoover, let me think. Oh, she does the old William Buckley show. Uh, can't think of the name of it. Plank? No, no, but, you know, anyway. But she's revamped that show. But she, and she has diverse guests and it's just conversation and I might not like the guest or something but I can sit there and listen to it and I garner what I would call factual news from that uh so those kind of shows I, I like to watch okay one more just popped into my head Bonnie or Bay she does one with all women called to the contrary and it's an again discussion half hour uh both sides that's the kind of news sources that I kind of prefer when they're just not screaming and have fluffy stuff over here and, you know, 10 ads in between. Or, or complaining about Trans Day being on Easter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's My huge. favorite news source is, of course, The Daily Show. Yeah. And they did a bit the other day uh, showing the Fox News commentators, like five or six of them. I saw Just that. getting evil and mean, and they cannot understand how, how Biden can be so... Uh, sacrilegious, and so I'm thinking, 
e- either these people reading this stuff are ignorant, which they're not. No. Or they think their 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 listeners are so ignorant that they don't realize Easter's on a different day every year. And that right. this was not the first uh year to have a trans recognition day, which to me sounds I don't know. I, I would think trans do not want to be recognized as trans, but I don't know. Oh no, I would. I, I would. Visibility think... was trans. I know, I know. But yeah, 2009 is when it started, and our attitudes toward that visibility might be uh, evolving right. slowly forward. That, I was. That was just my idea of a stupid joke. That's. Uh, I, I understand <laughs> why they why they have it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, perpetuating. That, uh, which is to me false, about the poor white evangelical Christians. That's where that was all coming from. I oh, think, and they're because... being so persecuted. Oh, yes. Right. This is really... Uh, right. Um, that, without recognizing one of the, the history. Of... One of the things Trump wants to do is stop the persecution of... of Christians. Of white Christians, white men, Christians. White men, yeah. There you go. There was just a politician someplace got recalled because he'd been going to... Uh, a white supremacy meeting to something, and they asked him what his policies were, and he, and that was the last one. He says, "I want to make sure that I can do something about the persecution of white men." Yeah, Still guess going what? On. He got recalled, <laughs> but none, uh, that might not have happened in every town at the end. Right. Well, you know the, these hyperbolic issues that that are perpetuated on those networks that are the 24-hour news cycle. It just has to be filled. So that's the way they can fill it, is just being as hyperbolic and as crazy and can show vitriolic as little, they can. Little, little scenes of, of pastures and bird, yeah. birds flying around and tweet, 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 tweet. <laughs> but, you know, that's why I like, the, I like watching the C-SPAN, like today, just before I got here. In fact, I was a little late because I was watching C-SPAN. <laughs> And there was after after Mark Gallagher was interviewed, he's the chair of the Committee on Cyber and Information Technology mm. Readiness. That was a fascinating interview, by the way, to be able to discuss the issues of whether we should have a new um a new cyber Air Force, like like the Air Force, have a cyber force, cyber technology force. It was a very interesting interview. Oh, I, yeah. Well, I think we need to worry about that cyber attack. Absolutely do. And then the next person that came on was talking about, oh, she was interviewing the uh, Mayorkas, the, who's, who's the, oh, the uh, Homeland Security yes, yes. fellow. And he was talking about AI being a positive thing right now. They're using AI to train um, some of the agents to be able to interview um, the people who are coming in to be asylum seekers and to be able to recognize their attitudes and their uh, their facial expressions and some of the ways that they avoid answering questions. Yeah, it is a little scary, isn't it? Well, Trump, yeah. Trump says they're all animals, so they should be having veterinarians interview them. <laughs> oh, we can laugh about that. <laughs> well, on these, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Kathy, just real quick. Um, these uh, news sources that, instead of just reporting the news, they end up, to me, fomenting hate and distrust. Yeah. Of course they are. A lot of That's them. stupid. That's the bad part about it. And they're, and doing they're it. considered news, yeah. legit news. Uh, they're doing it to make money. That's the bad part about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we expanded a little on the AI discussion. Thank you, Billy, for those points of view. But when we think about being judged by AI, human beings being judged by AI on their body language, their tone of voice, their eyes averting or refusing to look into someone else's eyes, all of that is very creepy to me. You know, uh, and- uh, uh, I also want to call out um, Democracy Now! I listen to it on the radio on long trips or uh, any PBS, I mean, any public uh, radio station I can get. And um, we have it on in the morning as well. Because, yeah, and, and, and going from county to county, I'll pick up Jefferson Public Radio and other stations going south. 
but they're all very, very important to me. Like this one is very, very important to me. <laughs> well, let me bounce back uh, again. I got here. I'm going to critique CNN a little more, but we were talking about the various things. The one, the breaking news, the one that really galled me, and at the time, what we, my wife and I were watching CNN a lot, the, uh, it's not funny, but the jet that disappeared in the Indian Ocean and how that went on and on and on. That was breaking news, and they had that English, uh, irritating English guy that came on all the time, uh, professor, you know, knew about jets, whatever. But that got a little way overboard. Yeah. An important story, so, tragic story. But to me, the way that was covered, just constantly slamming it in our faces, oh, I just couldn't watch that. I hate it when there's a disaster someplace, a tornado or something, tears apart a city, and they're covering it for hours right away when they don't know anything. Right. And right. they're interviewing people that... Uh, don't know anything either. Yeah, well, they had... They had <laughs> there, was a, there was a bit on, on, on your news a while back where... It, the the thing was was called uh, the guy that don't know poop. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and so they're showing a they're showing a uh, uh, a scene where something happened, and a person with a microphone goes up to the person and says, "Well, can you tell me your insight on this?" Is well, I don't know. I just saw a crowd. I was driving by, and so there you have it, folks. From a man that's, on the scene. Right. That's the other thing that drives me crazy is the man on the scene thing. And the whole town is gone, and they interview somebody who says, "Well, I've never seen anything like this before." Duh. <laughs> and do we need them out in the in the hurricanes? We we've seen that a thousand times. Yeah. We know the hurricanes. Bet get out of there. It, 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 and my, my, my absolute favorite is interviewing the mother whose baby was just killed in some kind of a thing, and and if she starts to cry, they they zoom in. You know, to make sure. Right. I, I don't know if they get extra points or if that were me doing that interview, I would stop and say, "Man, I'm very sorry I did this." Well, and, and I, then, how could a family member even uh, agree to do that? I get that's the other Everybody thing I don't understand. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think if if you're talking about something like losing a child, you're not thinking straight anyway. So no, at that yeah. point. And then a whole thing about if it bleeds, it leads. Oh yeah, you know. Ooh, that's I used to spend a lot of. Stuff. I used to spend a fair amount of time in. In Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and we'd watch the Philadelphia news. Without fail, there was a fire every night. I think if there wasn't one, they went out and set one or something. <laughs> or used file footers, but there had to be a fire on the news every night. <laughs> you know, going back to comedy too as my news source. Um, <laughs> hey, some, I think it's great. I'll even go uh, the two guys, and I got to think Michael Che and Colin Jones oh, yeah. on Saturday Night Live. Um, I, I just think they're hilarious, and you can garner bits of really good news in, in all of their bits, and you can laugh at the same time, which I love. Yeah. Uh, used to be, I, I still watch, well, Bill Maher, uh, it's on CNN now. Um, but I've lost a little love for him, I guess, over the years, over the months. But his show, I think, is still one of the best. He has a lot of great people, a lot of good interviews both sides. He's a smart dude, man, but he's kind of gone over the anti-woke cliff a little too much for me, uh, but still a good source of news. I think he has a lot of factual news on his show. I like Sean Oliver, too. I'm, oh, God. I look for, for programs that, whether they're funny or not, that, that actually give you some context, some depth to what they're talking about. Alan Poor is a really good example of that. Love stuff is lady. real good that way. I don't know of a better interviewer. I mm -hmm. really don't. No. Good point with John Oliver, though. You're right. And he really digs deep into yeah, he does. various uh, I'd top, uh, call, topics. I'd call John Oliver a documentarian. I've watched many of his, and they're 20 or 30 minutes long, in-depth uh, talks about a subject. And I can luckily uh, get him on YouTube. And there are a lot of YouTube channels. I pay one YouTube subscription and I get I, all these people you've been naming, I can get. I can get Trevor Noah, I can get Colbert and Seth Meyers and Jimmy Kimmel. So they're all there um, available, uh, even though I don't have network TV. And like I said, yeah. comic news, it's just a little bit more bearable. It's like taking a, an aspirin with some sugar, you know? <laughs> 
My mom used to crush an ap- aspirin tablet and some sugar between two spoons, and then she'd say, okay, open your mouth, and I knew the sugar was on there, so I'd take, a, take it and then a drink of orange juice. But anyway, that's what the, that's what the comedians are like that um, give us the news. But the rest of the news to me is, um, feels like gossip. I saw Trevor- It's inflated, stretched, as you've all said, you know, it's stretched out to last 24 hours, and it just feels like gossip. I can't take it. I, I saw Trevor to- Noah, Noah doing, a, I guess it was a stand-up bit not too long ago, and I did, didn't watch the whole thing, but the portion of it I watched, he said that now that he's free from the Daily Show, he's doing a lot of a lot of traveling and going places and finding out the different ways different countries look at things. And this was a uh, he was referring to uh, places like Florida who want to hide the fact that there were slaves and or or that uh, that uh, Indians which uh, Native Americans were treated badly or anything like that. He said now he finds when he goes to Germany, it's exactly the opposite. They fully uh, embraced the idea that they were bad. They were Nazis. They killed people. And they don't try to hide it or, or act like uh, that's going to make the school kids feel bad. Maybe it will, but that's meant to be a good idea. But this ridiculous idea that, that we have in this country, uh, that we need to hide our past, we, we should hide it. I mean, it's uh, in, in reality, it's pretty damn bad, but... Um, yeah, I don't think the, we should hide it, but yeah, accept it and then teach about it. I I, I don't know about get over it, but no, yeah, just accept it. it. No, I, I think the the fact that we're a young country compared to any country in Europe um, speaks to the fact that we have not evolved to the point where we can accept the things that we have done. We would rather just sweep them under the rug. Are we evolving the wrong way, though? Well, that's what I'm saying. We haven't evolved. We have not evolved in the right way. Uh, We're devolving in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I hear people talking about the saintly founding fathers, it makes me a little ill. You know, we the 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 country was was uh, was founded on slavery, manifest destiny, and um, genocide and white supremacy, of course, and religious freedom. Oh, yes. The yeah, you freedom. wouldn't, you know, know that by the way people talk nowadays. Yeah, yeah that's the devolution. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I say, yes, that's the devolution that we're yes. experiencing. Yeah. Indeed. So let's talk more about Fox News. I don't like beating oh, up well. Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> why do people, why do people just keep watching that? Do we? How, the how problem did, it, is reality. Uh, that we have two separate realities. And I mean, I like to engage people who have a different point of view than me and try to find some kind of consensus and, you know, make a human connection. And I think that's how we resolve some of these things. But it's so difficult when you're talking to someone who has a completely different vision of what is real. Like facts just don't exist anymore. You go in the house that we can the, agree it, on. 52-inch television uh, is on Fox News 24 hours a day. I believe it's the adrenaline of fear and anxiety and angst. It's like uh, you get addicted to adrenaline, and uh, that's what they're aiming for, that rush. Well, and the, on Fox News, there is one, um, there's one right-wing, well, right, uh, to, the, to the, I'm sorry, left, left. the left of Fox commentator, and she fights like crazy to get her points across. Jessica Tarloff. Jessica Tarloff. Wonderful Jessica lady. Tarloff is the only voice on Fox that is is trying to pull them back to reality, and she often she's often successful, but she boy, she is has it, to work at it. Is this a group show? Or? It's yeah, a, the, yeah. The Je- Five? It's The Five, yeah. yeah. You've got Which Jessica is unwatchable Tarloff. until she got until on, she and now I can on, check yeah. it out. But boy, they give her a hard time. Yeah, You know, one of the things that I was really impressed by or, and kind of puzzled, really, is um, on MSN, they hired, what was her name? I, the tip of my brain, the, the one that just left the RNC, who was the, the chairperson of the RNC. And, and they hired her to go on MSNBC. And for 24 hours, absolutely every single commentator said, 
I'm telling you, this is a bad idea. And they're saying it out loud yeah. on air against what their bosses wanted them to say. And she was gone. That was but the bad fact move on their part. That 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 they stood up for what they thought, uh, in spite of that being their boss's decision, was kind of impressive, really. It, it, it was. I was surprised. I but saw now, one of those people interviewed, and she says, you know, we... Uh, welcome uh, an opposing point of view or other points of view, but, but they just not, but, but they don't welcome out. it because they wouldn't allow her to stay on air. I thought that was very very inappropriate. They should no, uh, the, evidently they, not, they say she's so, so dishonest that that, that, was that it issue. would not work. It wasn't that she was a different point of view, but she it was really bought out. They could have had somebody sitting next to her and and fact check her the whole time. Well, they instead of just ousting her, uh, I thought it was a bad move. And I guess we have a point of disagreement between the panel here because I'm on, <laughs> I'm on, I'm on Billy's Yay. side. When I heard of that, it was a fiasco, and I thought the executives, whatever that made that initial decision, that was pretty stupid. But they made the decision, and then to have, I thought it looked bad on MSNBC. Very bad. Yeah. Okay, so that's well, Billy I and I's agree. opinion. I, I don't agree with that. I think that. It was impressive that they stood up for their beliefs, and I agree that that woman would never have told the truth. She talked out of both sides of her mouth every time she, she opened yes, it. She did, and she was a bad person to have representing anybody, especially the news. That's true. But what a great opportunity to sit somebody beside her and have a count a point counterpoint show, and they didn't do it. Well, that's that true. I suppose you could just have a show about arguing about the truth a lot, which would yeah. be helpful maybe, but um, <laughs> and th that was not what the plan was on the part of the brass, so. Anyway. Which saying uh, brings me one more time, point, counterpoint, yeah. I have to go back to comedy, the old SNL. Yeah. I love how we can skewer everything in America, politicians, religion, news shows, uh, Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin. Oh, Jane, yeah. you oh, ignorant yeah. slut. <laughs> I thought that was just beautiful the way they did that. Yeah, but you can't do that today. Prop, maybe not. That maybe is not. another problem I'm having. That was a play. Is that we're so politically correct. I mean, humor is almost a thing of the past. But the the point counterpoint that was a play with the with uh, um, Gilda Rather. That was a play on on William Buckley and and. Uh, yeah, I don't think. Well, what, yeah, what was those? The other two that did it, and I, I can't remember. Um, Sixty minutes. It was on Sixty Minutes. It was point counterpoint with William Buckley and um, I can't remember her name. The one that was on the right side, and he well, called her an oh Jane a Shana you insufferable Shana, slut Shana, Shana Alexander <laughs> Shana Alexander. Oh well, we got the names <laughs> around somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> comedy still pushes the envelope though. The uh, the other night on um, the uh, the new show on Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. they said that the movie I can't remember the name of the guy. The movie about the atomic bomb, anyway, Oppenheimer. was Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer yeah. was opening in Japan this weekend by, by surprise. I didn't, I, it's so funny. <laughs> well, well. Anyway, we've got about a half a minute left, yeah. so. Okay. Well, that was fun. Any, anybody nice have fun any? Everybody. I just encourage people to go to that media bias fact check thing if you're concerned yeah. about a. A new source. I, th we I do think need they're really more fact good. checking out there for sure. Yeah, I'm going to check out some of these uh, place names I got from you guys for the news. Me too. Well, thanks everybody. So here we go. Thank you. And thank you. Thank signing you. Off. Signing off. Signing off till the signing next time. Off. We encourage anybody with opposing voices come on KCIW. I didn't even mention that this oh, show will be live. Yes, and we'll we'll have audience participation by text. Mm -hmm.